Hey everybody, Jeremy here. We're going to take a look today at some Windows power user type operations. And this is part of how I set up Windows when I'm using it here in the lab. Uh, your mileage may vary, but I find these activities and uh, ways of using Windows to be helpful and to streamline it more the way I'm comfortable working. Let's get started. Here we are on our Windows 11 desktop. And this is a relatively fresh install. I've used it in a couple of previous demos, but I have not gone through all the customizations that I would normally go through. So let's start in and try to do a few of these customizations since I plan on keeping this VM around going forward. So the first thing we want to do is disable some of the notifications. So we need to get into settings and the keyboard shortcut to do that is Windows and I, which will bring up settings directly. You can of course go to Windows and click settings here, or you can right click the Windows icons and go to settings that way. Any of the three will work, but when you're here, we want to go to system, which we're in, notifications under additional settings we want to uncheck get tips and suggestions when using windows we want to uncheck suggest ways to get the most out of windows and finish setting up this device and get rid of show the windows welcome experience after updates that's going to go a long way towards improving the Windows experience, especially for power users. So the next thing we want to do, we'll minimize settings. We'll come down here to the volume gadget. We'll right click on that. Sound settings, more sound settings. We'll come here to sounds. And we're going to change the sound scheme to no sounds and apply that. I'm sure I'm not the only one that finds the default sounds in Windows to be rather annoying. All right, so that's going to go a long way to disable notifications and things that we just don't need. So we'll go ahead and close settings. Now we might want to change the way icons show up on the taskbar and I've done that to some extent already. You can right click on taskbar, taskbar settings. And as you can see here, I've turned off search. I've hidden widgets and chat as well as the system tray icons for pen menu and virtual touchpad. If we come into other system tray icons, We've got the Windows status, Windows update status is the only one turned on. Everything else I have turned off. I don't use OneDrive. I've even turned off MultiPass for the moment, as well as WinGet UI. Now, these two I could easily toggle back on and it's not really going to bother me. You can also look at taskbar behaviors and if you like the old style windows where your start menu is on the left hand side you can now in fact move it back over there honestly i happen to like it in the center because i also use linux and mac os and i just like it in the center so to each their own but you can do that. All right. One of the things that I typically do with a new Windows install is to run the Chris Titus PowerShell to sort of decrapify Windows, de-bloat Windows, whatever you would like to call it. Windows Utility is what it's called now. A big update with 50 commits has been made for May 2023. We can come over here to GitHub. We can see the source and all that fun stuff. And that's not actually where we wanted to go. 
We can come to when you till sort of at the top. We can see a screenshot of what it looks like. And right here is the PowerShell that we need to grab to run it. Then we'll open up PowerShell as administrator or terminal as administrator, as this is called. It is running PowerShell in the terminal. And we're going to paste that in and it will bring up our handy dandy utility. Answer the prompt. So we're going to go ahead and let it install chocolatey because it does use that in addition to Winget to install things. And this will take just a moment or two to finish up. And here we are after I restarted the terminal. We have the Chris Titus Tech Windows utility. And so we've already got Chrome installed. We can install Firefox, communications. Let's say we want to install Telegram just for the sake of argument. And we can come through and take a look at the other things we may want to install on here. Let's do advanced IP scanner. If we want, we could do multimedia. And then there are plenty of utilities in here. Install selection. Did that not do anything? Telegram. Install selection. Install process is currently running. So pop over here and we can see that it is working in the background. And we've got advanced IP scanner. Can go ahead and close that. It's installing Firefox. And it's done. So we can minimize that. We can go to the tweaks tab. And so this is where we can kill a couple of birds with one stone. We can create a restore point. We can disable telemetry. Uh, Wi-Fi isn't going to ever get used on this machine. Delete temp files. We can run disk cleanup. Disable home group and storage sense and hibernation. All this stuff is good. Miscellaneous tweaks. You can even set DNS to be something non-standard. Handy for the budding power user. And I think we'll just leave those alone and we'll go ahead and run tweaks. And again, that's going to pop up over here. Tweaks are finished. It's running disk cleanup, which is all good. You've successfully resolved the low disk space condition and it has space remaining. All right, there are also config options. You can access legacy control uh, panel and different things. And then of course there are some updates options and we're going to hit the security option, which is recommended. It will delay feature updates and install security updates after four days. So not a bad setting to have there. And that is that. We'll go ahead and quit that and close our terminal. All right, so the next thing on the list is to create an easy access to God mode. So we're going to create a new folder. And we're going to rename it to a particular string of characters. When it works correctly, and I'll put the name in the description, but when it works correctly, it reskins the folder and it gives you access to all of these hidden or potentially hidden options, many of which used to be in the control panel application. Now, that being said, you can still come here to search and access control panel. So it's not strictly necessary to do this, but it can be one heck of a time saver to 
put this on your desktop. Now, don't give this to everybody. You want to keep this for the people that are going to administer the system. So again, food for thought for power users and administrators. So for instance, we've got turn off unnecessary animations and when possible. And you've also got the option to remove background images. Great. We can close that. So nice thing to know about. Next up is one of the things that I find most annoying about Windows 11 is how they've made it more difficult than Windows 10 to change default applications. And I'm sure you've heard about this before, but we need to get into settings. So Windows I or your preferred method, apps, default apps. Now, it used to be that you just set it to the default. Simple button and you're good to go. Now with Windows 11, you need to set the default for each file type. So each file extension needs to be set. And as you can see, many of these that I know I'm going to use, uh, here's another one that needs to be reset. Chrome. And in fact, I believe all these can just be set to Chrome and be just fine. So completely unnecessary. I've not seen this anywhere else in any recent operating system, but you know, your mileage may vary. So something to know about, and this would be a good project to script. I'm sure you can access this using PowerShell. So you may want to have a custom PowerShell that runs after you've installed your browser or different things and set the default application that way. Likewise, if we were to come in here for LibreOffice, um, we're going to see that, well, there's no Microsoft Office installed, so uh, it will, in fact, open Doc and DocX in LibreOffice Writer, and you could assume, get down to the bottom, there's XLS and XLSX are set to LibreOffice Calc. So everything is good there. Okay, next up we've got updating drivers. So of course, if you come into system, again, Windows I, Windows Update, many of your drivers will be updated through Windows Update. GPU drivers you might have to get from the manufacturer of your graphics card. And something else to keep in mind is that Device Manager also allows you to update drivers. So you can right click on a particular driver and say update driver. Search automatically. And the best driver is already installed. Something that you should know about. All right, next up is creating a local account for offline mode. So if you installed Windows or set up Windows with a Microsoft account and you've decided that you no longer want to use that Microsoft account, you can change it over to a local account. And to do that, again, Windows I to get to settings, accounts, and you can see that I'm not using a Microsoft account currently. But if you did, you would come into your info. And instead of sign in with a Microsoft account instead, it would say sign in with a local account instead. And doing that will allow you to switch from the Microsoft account to the local account. And you can safely ignore the unfounded claim. Again, this is just marketing speak. 
Windows is better when settings and files automatically sync. And if you have used Windows for any amount of time, or if you consider yourself a power user, there is a high likelihood you don't want your settings and files to sync. If I'm going to sync my files somewhere, I'm going to control where they sync to. And I'll use Nextcloud for that, or Sync Thing, or a number of other options that I can exert my own control over. Again, the whole idea of God mode. To wrap up this look at Windows 11, we're going to create a restore point manually. So we're going to go to start and we're going to search for create a restore point. You don't even need to type in the whole thing. Comes up right here. And so as long as system restore is turned on, all I have to do is click create and we're going to just call it as after customizations and it will create a restore point. Now we created one a few minutes ago as part of the Chris Titus Windows utility, but there's no wrong amount of restore points, really. You're limited by the space available to you. And that, my friends, is gonna bring us to the end of another Practical IT video. If you like the video, please take a moment, like, subscribe, and leave me some comments down in the comment section letting me know what was your favorite tool? And if you've got other tools, feel free to list them in the comments. You cannot provide links because I have that turned off. But if you leave me some comments, I will definitely look up the tools and at least take a look at them. And with that, thank you once again for watching and I will see you next time. Have a great day, everybody.